Welcome to Community Chapel World Outreach in our weekly online church service. During this period of quarantine, we've been encouraged by Pastor Kay as a body to read Psalm 91 daily. In particular, Psalm 91 verse 15 says the following, They shall call upon me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in their trouble. I will deliver them and honor them. In this week's service, the message is entitled, The Power of Prayer. Let us worship together. We want to open in a word of prayer before we start. We want to say that we've been singing and worshiping and praising the Lord and the sanctuary, the house of God, where we're standing right now, has the presence of God here. And we know that as we uh, do the filming of this, that you're going to sense his mighty presence. Would you bow your heads with me as we open in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we just come boldly before the throne of grace. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in the lives of every one of us. We pray for the church membership, God, that you will touch them and minister to them, encourage and strengthen them. And Lord, through this online service, that the power of your presence will so touch and minister to them that they'll be encouraged in a very positive and wonderful way. We pray that you'll be exalted, that you'll be glorified, and you'll be honored in everything that's said and done. For we ask this in the name above every name, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. <laughs>
I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living Word of God. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. This Bible is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Everything this Bible says we can be, we can be it. Everything the Bible says we can do, we can do it. So we thank God for this word that we have in our hands. The Bible is our source of strength to our spiritual and inward being. I want to uh, tell you a story about the power of prayer and, and how it can affect all of us in such wonderful ways. And I'm sure at one time or another, all of us have been people of prayer. We should be. Jesus said, my house should be called the house of prayer. Well, let me share this story of a three-year-old boy who went grocery shopping with his mother. I don't think he went with the mother, but I think the mother took the child. But he's three years old, and before they entered in to the grocery store, the mother turned over to the young boy and said, you're not getting any chocolate chip cookies. Do you understand? And don't even ask for any. But she put him then in the cart, and they went through the doors, and up and down the aisles they went looking for uh, the items that they wanted to put in their basket, and they came down the cookie section. And as they came down the cookie sta station of the, uh, uh, the grocery store, the little boy stood up in the cart, and he said, Mom, can I have some chocolate chip cookies? I told you not to ask. Now sit down, and I want you to be quiet. And she began searching for more items that she wanted, and she left the cookie section, and she went up and down, and she finally uh, realized she had to go back to the cookie section. So they swung around to the cookie section, and the little boy uh, knew what that section was all about, and he says, Mom, can I please have some chocolate chip cookies? I told you. You can't have any. Now sit down, be quiet, and don't ask anymore. Finally, she was coming to the checkout stand, and as she was approaching the checkout stand, the boy knew that this certainly was his last chance to inquire about those chocolate chip cookies. He stood up and he shouted with the loudest voice that he had, In the name of Jesus, can I have some chocolate chip cookies? Everyone around began to laugh, and some applauded. And due to the generosity of all the shoppers, the little boy and the mother left the grocery store with 28 boxes of chocolate chip cookies. Now the Bible says that you have not because you ask not. He says, ask and you shall receive. Notice the boy first said, Mom, can I have some chocolate chip cookies? Then he said, Mom, can I please? And then finally he said, in the name of Jesus. We could see the progression of, of this young boy's determination to get these cookies. And prayer is communication with God. It's a relationship with God that he desires from you and I. There are different dimensions and levels of prayer that I want to talk about today. I want you to turn in your Bibles to James chapter 4, verse 8. In James chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. A lot of us want the Lord to come near us, but we're not drawing near unto him. And when you pray, you communicate to the Lord what you desire of him. Now, when you pray, it isn't, Father, give me, get me, bless me, do this, and do that. But prayer is communication. When you communicate with somebody, you talk, they listen. And then they talk, and you listen. So when we pray to the Father and draw near unto him, he draws nigh to you and I as well. Three different types or dimensions of prayer, I said, and there are different levels of anointing. But all three of these prayers are powerful, and they're all effective, and they all touch God. 
The first type of prayer that I want to speak about is simple prayer. Now, simple prayer is just simply talking to God as you would talk to a friend. Now, praying with words straight from your heart is what simple prayer is. When you pray, you pray from your heart. The Bible says in Mark chapter 7, verse 6, The people draw near to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You see, when we communicate and pray in simple prayer, we pray with our heart. And the Lord hears. Now, we pray for people. We say, God, I'm asking you to touch my family and, and help them through this virus and situation. And that's a simple prayer. We pray simple prayers like, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our food. Let it be nourishment and strength to our bodies. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. That's a simple prayer. Another simple prayer is our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. The Lord's Prayer is a very simple prayer. And most of the time, every one of us have prayed simple prayers. And if you haven't, may I encourage you to start praying to the Father from your heart and just speaking to him those things that your heart cries for. The second level of prayer is called intercession. Now, intercession is a deeper level of prayer than just the simple prayer. It means to stand in the place of another before God. Did you know that when Jesus left this earth, he went and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty in heaven? And do you know that he has been interceding ever since he left this earth? He is standing between us and the Father. He intercedes for us. In Isaiah 59, 16, it says God looked for a man. And he says he wondered, and he looked, and there was no intercessor. You see, God is looking for people who will go a little deeper in their prayer relationship with him. You see, intercession is when you strongly appeal to God. It's praying in the heavenly language, praying in the spirit. It's with weeping and crying out that intercession is produced in your life. You just weep, you cry, you speak in that heavenly language. Now in Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. You know when you get sick and you have things happening in your body, it says here in Romans 8, 26, that we do not know what we should pray for, but the Spirit intercedes and makes intercession. So many times we don't know how to pray, or even what to say in prayer. And when you move into intercession, you just weep, you sob, you speak in that heavenly language, and God hears and understands and he answers. We need to go even deeper than intercession. The third level is called travail. Travail is a deeper uh, relationship in prayer than just simple and intercession. And we want to grow in our prayer life with God. Travail is a birthing anointing. Without travail, nothing can be birthed or produced. You see, Isaiah 66, 8 says, As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth. Zion is God's people. We need to pray, and we need to pray in the level of travail. It is it is uh, initiated by God. You can't work yourself up into travail, but God drops that anointing on you, and you begin to pray uh, in the area of travail. Now, in travail, there's no word spoken. You see, it's strong emotion that's poured out in weeping and groaning like a woman in travail giving birth to a child. In Isaiah 42, 14, it says, Now I will moan like a woman in labor. I will gasp and I will pant. This kind of prayer might be offensive to a lot of people, and therefore you don't see travail in the churches very often. And if you do, they will quietly slip to the prayer room and begin to pray. Nobody wants to hear somebody groaning and moaning it draws attention to them. But this prayer 
is a powerful prayer. The results of travail is people get saved. Did you know that when you receive Christ as your personal Savior, that person that witnessed to you and shared his faith with you and had you say the sinner's prayer isn't the one that birthed you. It was somebody around the world that God placed travail on and you were birthed into the kingdom of God. I want to say that travail breaks strongholds. There are people that are bound with strong spirits and they need to be delivered and set free. Jesus said, this kind cometh out by fasting and prayer, and that prayer is travail with groaning in intercession and prayer, deep groanings and moanings that uh, you can't hardly utter because you're bent over with like pains of birthing. It produces miracles. You know, we had uh, a couple in our church. In fact, they were elders in ministry in our church, and their names were Peggy and Leo Rood. And they had a burden for the Indian reservation. And we took funds and raised money. And they got a brand new truck and trailer. And they packed it with clothing. They packed it with literature. They packed it with uh, children's ministry and items to give to the children and tell them about Christ. And they took off. And we laid hands on that truck and camper. And we just began to pray God's blessing upon them as they went to the mission field and didn't think much about it and mother gave Peggy a log book to log down every day and she says now when you get back Peggy you and Leo are going to give a report of your missionary trip and she said okay they drove off into the sunset and down towards the Indian reservations now as we understood that she was doing this we began to pray for Peggy and Leo on the field well there was a certain night that one of our prayer warriors in the church, and by the way, her husband was a non-believer and didn't really understand her love and determination to go to church all the time, but he put up with it. He was sitting in the living room and his feet were kicked up in the chair and she was in the kitchen doing dishes and all of a sudden she heard God speak, Peggy and Leo. And when she heard their names, uh, travail hit her, she bent over, she took her dish towel and stuffed it in her mouth so her husband wouldn't hear her groaning and mourning, and she began to go, Ooh, God, and she was praying, and, and pretty soon it lifted, and uh, she wrote the date and the time down, and when Peggy and Leo came back from the mission field, uh, she ran over to her and said, Peggy, what happened on such and such a day about this time? Because I, I wrote it down on a piece of paper uh, in my kitchen because the Lord uh, put you and Leo on my heart. And Peggy said, I can't imagine what that was all about, but let me look. So she pulled out her logbook and began to turn the pages, and she came to the very date and time. And when she did, Peggy went, Lord! And so the prayer warrior said, what happened? And she said, well, Peggy, we were driving down the highway. And when you're driving down the desert, it's a straight highway, mile after mile after mile after mile, a long, long time, before you see that road twist or turn in any direction. And as we were on that long road, uh, Leo said to me, Peggy, look at the sunset. Isn't it beautiful? So we both took our eyes off of the road and we're looking at the sunset and there was such beautiful, beautiful colors uh, in the desert at sunset. And uh, as they were uh, doing that, they heard this beep, beep, air horn, beep. And uh, Leo turned around and looked and it was uh, one of those 10-wheeler trucks coming and it was coming head on to them. They didn't have any time to turn the wheel in any direction. And Leo threw his hands up and said, Oh God! And Peggy closed her eyes and she knew that was it. And she closed her eyes and as she did, uh, there, uh, nothing hit, nothing crashed. And so they opened their eyes and the truck was on the side of the road idling in neutral. And that 10 wheeler truck had gone all the way down the road. That's what travailing prayer can do. It can move the hand of God. God wants us to pray as individuals. Pray as a church and pray as a nation. Because when we pray, 
in any of those levels of prayer, God hears from heaven and he answers. Now prayer can make a difference in what God does. And you want God to do some things where well, you need to start praying. In Exodus chapter 32, it says that uh, Moses delayed his coming from the mountain and they took off earrings and they threw it in the fire and they made a golden calf. And God told Moses, the people down there have sinned a great sin. I am hot with anger. I want you to let me alone and get me so hot that I will absolutely destroy them. And from you, Moses, I will bring a nation. And Moses began to intercede. He pleaded with God. And the Bible says that uh, instead of God destroying the people, God listened to Moses and God changed his mind. Do you understand that prayer can change the mind of God? What God wants to do, it can literally be changed because your prayers can make a difference. In Isaiah 38, the prophet Isaiah came to Hezekiah. And the prophet came to Hezekiah. He was sick on his bed. And he came to the king and he said, Hezekiah, get your house in order for you're going to die. How would you like a prophet to come to you and say, get your house in order, you're going to die? Now, some of us would probably appreciate it because we'd go get a will made or a living trust, which we haven't put on delay for some time. But that wasn't the case. You see, when he said, you're going to die, the prophet turned around and left the king. And as he was going out into the courtyard, the Bible says Hezekiah turned himself to the wall. He began to cry and intercede. He with groanings and praying to God, he cried out. And God told the prophet, turn, go back to the king. So the prophet went back into the king and said, listen, Hezekiah, God is going to give you 15 more years to live because God has heard your prayer. Oh, church, it makes a difference when we pray to God. What God plans to do, whatever he plans to do, we can hasten it, we can delay it, and we can change it by the power of prayer. Another thing I want to say is that prayer can affect your circumstances. You see, is there anything too hard for God? We learned last week, nothing's too hard for God. In Exodus 14, Israel leaves Egypt and Pharaoh, it says Pharaoh with his 600 choice chariots, choice, and all the chariots begin to pursue after Israel. Now those chief chariots had three men in them, warriors, fighters, and champions in the military. And they pursued after Israel, and Israel was standing in front of the Red Sea and mountains on either side. And here's Pharaoh and all the chariots pursuing after him. And the Bible says the children of Israel cried out to God. And I'd be crying out to God too. But not only did they cry out, but the Bible says Moses fell on his knees. And he cried, and God said, get up, Moses. Stretch forth your rod, because they're going to walk on dry ground. Oh, church, prayer can affect your circumstances. In Joshua chapter 10, it tells us that uh, uh, Joshua was in a battle against the Amorites. And uh, the Amorites were warriors and fighters. And the god of the Amorites was the sun god. And he was out in the battle fighting. And the sun was beginning to fade. Daylight was running out. And in the midst of the battle, the Bible says that Joshua pointed to the sun, the God of the Amorites. And he pointed to the sun and he said, sun, stand still. And the Bible says that the sun stood still almost a day and Joshua defeated the enemy. I want to say that prayer can change and affect your circumstances, whatever you're going through. You see, our trust is in the power of God. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, it says, For unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think, according to his riches and glory, he says, I am going to give the church power 
and that power is in Jesus Christ. And in trusting Jesus with our trust and confidence, God can move and do wonderful things for us as individuals and as a church. Oh, church, the power of prayer is the power of the living God that we serve. We tap into God, we tap into power. A power that cannot stop anything but what God tells it to stop and what God tells it to do. God has given us power over all the powers of the enemy and everything in life. What a privilege, what an honor to be able to pray to God Almighty and to have God's power come in our circumstances and in our situations and make a difference like never before. God's moving in the earth. God's moving in this virus. I don't care about all the false uh, reports and, and uh, fake news that's out there, but one thing I do know, I am attached to a living power and a God that knows the truth. And as I pray to God, God can dispel all darkness. I am praying for God to dispel darkness. Every evil deed, every reporter that's reporting falsely, that God will so deal in that situation that truth will dispel the darkness. Church, it's time to pray. It's time for us to begin to develop a prayer time with God. I don't know where you are on the level of uh, anointing and prayer that you pray with, but if you're praying simple prayers, get into intercession. If you're praying intercession prayers, allow God and open yourself up to spend time in prayer that travail can come upon you and you can make a difference in what God is going to do. I would like us at this time just to bow our heads. I am believing God right now that he will increase your prayer life and he will cause you to know that when you pray, he hears from heaven. Would you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, I pray right now that the church body will be so challenged to prayer that they'll realize the power of prayer is your power, that you're all powerful, that we can touch your power in our lives and change circumstances and change situations. I thank you, God, for prayer. I thank you, God, through your son, Jesus Christ, that gave us access to your presence because no man can come to the Father except through Jesus. And we thank you that we can pray on our knees and we can touch your throne room. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In closing, I want to read a poem. And this poem is, is such a wonderful poem. I, I pray that it will touch your heart and challenge you in the area of getting on your knees, in the area of praying, and allowing God to use your voice to trumpet up and bring change to a lost and dying world. Last night I took a journey to a land across the uh, sea. I didn't go by ship or plane, but I traveled on my knees. I saw so many people there in bondage to their sin, and Jesus told me I should go, and their souls would be one. And I said, Jesus, I can't go to lands across the street. And he said quickly to me, yes, you can, by traveling on your knees. He said, you pray, and I'll meet the need. You call, and I will hear. It's up to you to be concerned. For lost souls are far and near. And so I did. I knelt in prayer. I gave up some hours of ease. And with the Savior by my side, I traveled on my knees. As I prayed on, I saw souls saved. I saw twisted people healed. I saw God's work of strength coming and people being renewed. While laboring, in the field, I said, yes, Lord, I'll take the job. Your heart I want to please. I heed your call and swiftly go by traveling on my knees. We're going to sing this chorus to you in closing. Sing with us in your presence.
there's everything that I need. In your for those that are sick. You know the sickness, God. You know the disease. You know the torment. I'm asking, God, that you will heal them. For by the stripes of your Son, Jesus Christ, healing is provided. And Lord, you said, command ye the works of my hands. So we command, Lord, that you bring healing and health, restoration to everyone now that has their hands lifted. That your power will come into their bodies and they'll know the healing touch of your presence. We thank you, God, for what you're doing right now. Continue the healing, for we ask it in your name, above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. In your 